To tell the story of a company and what its people did in the course of a year to all those interested presents something of a problem. It would be almost impossible to bring together in any one place at any one time the nearly one quarter million stockholders, the nearly 200,000 employees, or all our customers and friends. Consequently, we are taking this method of presenting the highlights of what the people of General Electric accomplished in 1947. Since this is primarily a report of the president of the company, it is only fitting that it be presented by Mr. Charles E. Wilson himself. In our printed annual report, the official record of the company's business for the year, we speak of General Electric in traditional terms that can be assessed and audited. But these facts alone do not fully represent what General Electric really is. Essentially, General Electric is people and their work. Every General Electric product, whether it is a home radio, a steam turbine, a refrigerator for the home, a locomotive, or an electric bulb, it is the result of GE hands and brains equipped with proper working tools. Yet figures, cold as they may be, still must be used to chart company progress. In order to provide a more comprehensive picture of General Electric Affairs, the financial statistics of the 1947 report have been consolidated to include not only those of the parent company, but those of certain affiliated companies. These are companies whose voting stock is 100% owned by General Electric and those who help to make up the domestic manufacturing activities of the General Electric family. The net sales bills by the company and its consolidated affiliates amounted to $1,330,776,000 $375. In comparing this to past records, it must be remembered that the years 1941 to 1946 inclusive were related directly or indirectly to the war. It does seem significant, however, that the 1947 volume was more than double that for 1940, the pre-war peak year in point of sales. While the sales volume in dollars increased greatly, the net income per dollar decreased. For after costs and expenses, with the exception of federal taxes on income, have been deducted, the sales income per dollar was only 10.9 cents. This is in contrast to the average income for the eight pre-war years through 1941 of 16 cents per sales dollar. This decrease in sales income has been due principally to the fact that price increases of General Electric products were not, as a matter of policy, permitted to keep pace with the increased cost of operating the business in this inflationary period. In the face of rising costs and the increased prices for raw materials and component parts, General Electric prices have increased less than half as much since 1940 as the prices of manufactured goods generally. As an extra effort to reverse the inflationary spiral, price reductions were made effective as of January 1st, 1948. These reductions, ranging from 3 to 10 percent and averaging more than 5 percent, were estimated to involve savings at consumer level of approximately $50 million during the current year. The company's net income available for dividends was $95,298,940, a smaller increase over the 1940 figures than in either the sales volume or the earnings of employees. During 1947, the number of our employees had increased 10% to the record level of 197,324, but still was outnumbered by the company's 249,000 
440 stockholders. Total payments to employees also reached a new all-time high, just as did the average annual earnings per employee. On a weighted average basis, this represents an increase of 70% in earnings over 1940, compared to the 59% increase in the cost of living. As you may recall, back in 1940, we laid down broad general plans for expanding our production facilities. This program was, of course, diverted to meet war production demands. Since that time, we have reconverted plants as rapidly as possible and added more space, equipment, and personnel to achieve both better production and distribution of our peacetime electrical goods. Having covered some of the highlights of 1947, I would now like to have you review our financial record of the year. The record of General Electric business for the year is shown by the income statement. Net sales billed represents the dollar value of products shipped to customers during the year. Out of this money, must come the cost of wages and salaries, raw materials, and such other costs and expenses as water and power, general maintenance, employees' benefit plans, social security and its operating costs, insurance and funds for self-insurance, sales taxes, and local taxes. There is a further deduction for depreciation of plant and equipment. For instance, if a machine is determined to have a life of five years and costs $10,000, its cost is charged off at the rate of $2,000 a year over a five-year period. With these costs charged off, we arrive at the figure for income from sales. Income from other sources constitute interest and dividends from non-consolidated affiliated companies, interest on marketable securities held as a source of ready cash, and dividends and interest on miscellaneous securities. Less interest on loans from banks and insurance companies. Against our total income at this point, charge federal taxes on income for the year and restore reserve for post-war adjustments and contingencies. This is part of a reserve of $15 million set aside out of income during the period from 1942 to 1944 to help defray the cost of the changeover from war to peacetime production. The reserve was restored to income rateably over the period of 20 months, commencing in October 1945 and continuing through May 1947. This leaves net income for the year. Of this net income, cash dividends were paid and the balance was reinvested in the business to help pay for such things as new plants and equipment and increased inventory. The balance sheet represents the year-end inventory of the assets and liabilities. The difference between the two is the net worth or the capital invested in the company. Our current assets constitute cash and marketable securities. These are securities which can be turned into cash on short notice. Accounts and notes receivable constitute money due from customers at the end of the year on goods billed. These are normally paid within 30 to 40 days after billing. And all other receivables. Inventories consist of all raw materials, all raw materials started in work and partly finished, and to a smaller extent, finished products not yet delivered.
less reserves for possible losses on inactive holdings and possible price declines. This represents customers' money paid in advance of shipment, principally on orders for heavy equipment, leaving our total for current assets. Our investments constitute principally money invested in non-consolidated affiliated companies, General Electric common stock, and miscellaneous securities. Less reserves for possible decline in value of these investments. Our fixed assets constitute land, buildings, and machine tools. Patents, franchises, plus the many millions of dollars worth of processes and general know-how are carried at only one dollar. Less depreciation reserve. Add funds for payments under United States government contracts and employee withholding tax and benefit plan collections. Current liabilities consist of accounts payable, money owed at the end of the year for materials purchased, but not yet paid. Accrued federal taxes on income for the year, plus other accrued items payable during the ensuing year, including local and state taxes, wages owed employees, amount due the General Electric Pension Trust, rents, royalties, replacements under product guarantees, and the like. And dividends declared but not yet paid. Notes payable represent principally $200 million borrowed from insurance companies and banks to finance post-war expansion and increase in business. Accounts payable and accruals not current are amounts not due within the coming year. Special funds represent money placed in the hands of the company to cover certain contract work and amounts collected from employees on withholding tax and benefit plans. Miscellaneous reserves are provided for product guarantees for self-insurance against fire losses and workmen's compensation allowances and for various other purposes. This reserve represents principally profits realized from the disposition of securities during the past 13 years, retained to cover possible losses from future transactions in securities. This is the outstanding common stock of General Electric, the money invested in the company by stockholders. Finally, surplus. This represents that part of the total earnings of the company since its organization, which has not been paid out as dividends, but instead has been put back into the business to finance the expanded plant facilities, additional inventories, and so on, required to keep pace with the company's growth. We arrive at the total for all liabilities and capital, balancing the total asset. The capital represents the net worth of the company. It is included on the liabilities side of the balance sheet because it is owed the stockholders by the company or let us say it is the money used by the company to earn money for the owners. It is the stockholder's stake in the business. 